Madam Ambassador, thank you very much for accepting to do this interview with the Voice of America Persian. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, it's been a year since uh, President Obama spoke on the phone with President Rouhani while he was here in New York. Uh, you have been involved in negotiations for many months, yet some skeptics say that there has been little progress. And some even say that President Rouhani is back a year later, but the gaps uh, between the positions of the two countries are wide. What would you say to the critics of the Obama administration in the United States and the critics of President Rouhani in Iran? I would say, as the President of the United States said in his UN General Assembly speech, we have a historic opportunity, and it's incumbent upon both of our countries to take that opportunity. We need the support of the international community to do that, uh, we each are going to have to make changes in the way that we deal with each other. Uh, we have simple objectives. Uh, the entire P5 plus one has simple objectives. That's the group that's negotiating this agreement under the leadership of the High Representative of the European Union, Catherine Ashton. We want to make sure that Iran does not acquire a nuclear weapon, and the Supreme Leader has said in his fatwa that Iran does not want and never has wanted and will never want a nuclear weapon, so it should be easy to put verifiable steps on the table that give the assurance to the international community that Iran's program is exclusively peaceful. That is the objective that we have. We ought to be able to make that objective. This is a very, very complicated negotiation, very technically detailed. I think we have made progress while we've been here during the UN General Assembly, and many leaders and virtually every foreign minister of the P5 plus one has had a bilateral with Iran and it has helped to improve our understanding. If I may, I'm going to come back to the bilateral, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. But yesterday, Secretary Kerry uh, said that uh, we still have the month of October, we still have a few weeks in November, but no deal is better than a bad deal. Do you think that we're going to have time to reach a good deal with Iran? And what if time is not enough? What's the option? Well, I think right now we are totally focused on option A, we need to keep the pressure on ourselves to get to this agreement. We have had our experts, because this is a very, very technical agreement, and there are issues here that none of us at the political level, quite frankly, understand. So the devil is truly in the details here. Uh, and so uh, we have had our experts spend countless hours, all of the P5 plus one, over the last many days, uh, working out the details. So even when we gain an understanding with each other, at the political level, at the top line, then we have to have our experts do very in-depth analysis to make sure what we're going to do is going to meet that objective, will really get us there. That's why this takes so long, that's why this is so complicated, but I believe we are making progress. That said, there's still some very crucial decisions that need to be made. Now, compared to the excitement and the, let's say, expectations of last year, it seems that the public sentiment in Iran uh, is a bit different. Uh, we do get feedback from our audiences uh, inside Iran, and uh, they are questioning what the benefits are for Iran to continue with these negotiations. If the deal is reached, how do you see a potential lifting of the sanctions? How would it affect and impact uh, possible economic developments in Iran? Well, I think even the joint plan of action, which was the first step in reaching a comprehensive agreement, has already brought uh, some benefits uh, to Iran. Uh, auto parts and auto services have come back in. Uh, services to make repairs to airplanes have come back in. Uh, some of the frozen assets uh, in uh, bank accounts around the world uh, have come back into Iran. So there's already been some immediate benefit to people's everyday lives. But indeed, if there is a comprehensive agreement, it will say that the world's relationship with Iran has changed fundamentally. Now, initially, the world will suspend sanctions because you have to get a sense that there is going to be compliance on all sides and that the agreement is going to hold and be durable. But I have to tell you, as soon as we suspend our major sanctions, which will happen very early in an agreement, uh, the world will flood into Iran. Uh, many international delegations have already been to Iran, uh, and so they will begin to see what they can do. It will be important to show that the agreement is durable, that it will last over a period of many years uh, because we have a long history here uh, that we are trying to solve. 
You've been uh, negotiating with the P5 plus one, but also uh, with, the, with the process, but also there are bilateral talks. What is important to the Iranian people, it seems, that it's not only the nuclear issue. Uh, yesterday, 25 different um, uh, human rights organizations wrote an open letter to President Rouhani urging him uh, to cooperate with the special rapporteur of the United Nations. Um, they talked about arbitrary detentions. There are Iranian Americans who are detained inside Iran right now. They talked about restrictions on freedom of expression and freedom of the press. Um, when you have these bilateral talks with the Iranian officials, do you bring these issues up also? You know, there are only two things I discuss in the now many bilaterals I've had with uh, uh, Iranians. Uh, one is, of course, the nuclear negotiation, and that is central to all of our discussions. The other is our American citizens who are detained in Iran. Uh, Jason Rezion, who is a Washington Post reporter, and his wife are detained. We have no idea why. Uh, both President Rouhani and Minister Zarif are very, very adept at using the American free press, and yet a journalist, an American journalist of a very... Uh, large newspaper in our country is being detained for no reason. We have American citizens, Amir Hekmadi and Pastor Abedini, who have been in Iran for a very long time. Uh, and we really hoped that there would be some humanitarian gestures when President Rouhani came to the United States. Uh, so we discuss whether there's a process to return Americans home. And Robert Levinson, not a dual national, but an American citizen, has been missing for seven years. The last place he was was in Iran. And although my Iranian uh, uh, counterparts have told me that they do not know where he is, we would like access to the investigation uh, so that we can try to find him and bring him home. Madam Ambassador, with these negotiations with Iran on the bilaterals also, uh, it seems that, if I may, I want to move beyond the P5 plus one. Uh, it seems that the threat of ISIS is very serious for both countries. Uh, the official statements say that there is no cooperation on that level between Iran and the United States. Uh, how is it possible for Iran and the United States to cooperate on something that they both feel is a very important threat to the region and to the world? You know, I expect that when President Rouhani speaks today to the UN General Assembly, he will talk about terrorism, he will talk about extremism. Uh, I know that this is something that is much on his mind. Uh, and indeed, I think that ISIL is something that Iran does not want to see continue either, uh, any terrorist organization. Uh, and indeed, uh, I think that we will both be doing things in parallel to try to degrade and ultimately defeat ISIL. Uh, but, you know, this is where the nuclear negotiation, which is a separate pathway, uh, does have an impact. Because indeed, if we can solve that issue, uh, it will change the relationship between the United States and Iran and the international community in a positive way. So that sometime in the future, uh, there may be areas where we can work together. Understanding, of course, that we still have major differences when it comes to state sponsorship of terrorism, when it comes to human rights, when it comes to our views about how things move forward in the world. Uh, but we have differences with other countries, and we find our way forward. I hope that day comes. And, you know, I want to say something to the Iranian people. I know that Iran is an extraordinary country where its citizens really have an enormous middle class, uh, very intelligent, very well educated, uh, offer much to the world, and have a history of civilization and culture that is quite extraordinary. Uh, I very much hope for the day when I can come and visit Iran, even as a public official, uh, and get to know the people of Iran. Uh, we have many Irani -Ameri Iranian Americans. It is a vibrant culture, uh, and we hope for a better day. Uh, if I may ask a uh, follow-up on what you said about the cooperation, if a, a deal is reached between Iran and the United States and the P5 plus one, uh, are the areas of cooperation going to extend uh, on regional concerns and issues, such as Afghanistan, or uh, stabilizing Iraq, and also IS? Well, I don't know. Uh, I would note that this uh, week we have su seen Sunni and Shia leaders uh, work together uh, to deal with ISIL. Uh, we have seen the uh, new leadership of Iraq 
uh, meet with uh, Sunni leaders from the region. I think we all have to get past the point where clans, tribes, sects, religion uh, do not divide us, but rather bring us together when we have a common threat. Um, Madam Ambassador, from what you have, uh, the negotiations that you've had from Iran, what is the lesson that you have taken uh, if you were to deal with, as a diplomat, with other countries that are not part of the non-proliferation, but still um, you would like to curb their cap capability? Uh, what would you say to those countries? You know, we get that criticism from a lot of countries. How can you let Iran enrich when you go around the world telling everybody else not to? Uh, we, in fact, are talking about a very limited enrichment program uh, over a long period of time until Iran would be treated like any other non-nuclear weapon state under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Uh, and indeed, uh, we do not believe that any country needs to enrich. There's plenty of fuel on the open market. Uh, but we are trying to get to an agreement here which allows us to move forward and for Iran to assure the international community that its program is exclusively peaceful. President Obama and the P5 plus 1 made a very bold decision uh, to permit the discussion of a limited enrichment program. We hope Iran takes advantage in a positive way of this quite historic decision by the leaders of the P5 plus 1, uh, and it is now time for Iran to take the difficult decisions it needs to to meet that challenge. My last question, observers are speculating on a possible follow-up on the phone call between President Obama and President Rouhani. Uh, they're both in the same city. President Obama is still here. Uh, they are here at the same time. Uh, how, how should we read this? You know, the way I'd read it is uh, no phone call, no meeting is what's needed right now. What's needed right now is a negotiation that works through the details and for the leaders to make the decisions they need to. Uh, to ensure the international community that Iran's program is exclusively peaceful. Ambassador Sherman, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And talking to us. Thank you. Thanks very much, ma'am.